I don't know how much time I got here. I'm going to talk to my people, my folk, my rallies, my loved ones, the haters, the naysayers, the saints and the ain'ts real quick. All in one walk. Sunday morning. What time is it? What time? Really? So it's Sunday morning everywhere. So I ain't saying nothing that's really out of character. And I may be hitting directly in some households in mornings, Sunday mornings, if you're cleaning up, because that's what it meant, Sunday morning. Music, something similar to what you might hear in the background. Mama got you up early sweeping. Daddy out doing something in the yard. Mopping, sweeping stuff into a big-ass 12-inch album cover, trying to get the house right. Trying to get the house right. Before you have to go to Sunday school, Way before church, which is sometime later on in the afternoon, the day is already accounted for. You wasn't in the sports. You ain't had nothing else to do, really. You was going to church and everybody knew it. If you had them parents that had done a whole lot of shit in their day, then they were probably going out getting other kids to make sure they went to church with you, trying to get their slate clean before they, you know, <laughs> left here. It was not a gimmick. It was in good, good spirit, but they knew what they were doing. They were trying to cover their bases because it's getting late. It's getting late in life, and you got to start making right. You got to start get yourself together. You never know the devil. You never know the hour. Nobody knows the hour, so you got to start doing stuff to make you feel like you got a shot getting in. You know, that's what I say. So, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, but this one I think I got it. So, if you're up doing that, then you're from an age in which I can relate to, and I want to just say good morning to you. It's afternoon here. Obviously, you just heard my. Uh, lovely color woman says it's already after 1 o'clock in the afternoon, so our day is commencing. And she's feeling the spirit. She got some gospel hymnals going right now. I'm, I'm ready to put on my nice new suit, too, and go outside and say say hey to people. Be nice to white people and everything. I think we should, <laughs> if you feel it, you should do that. But we got the corona, so I can't do that. <clears throat> and... Um, the reason why I think I get vocal behind spirituals is because it don't necessarily put me in a mindset of how much more I need to praise because I always feel the need to do so. I kind of go backwards because I know where the songs and the true essence of spiritual songs came from. And a lot of it was when we were in a captive state. We needed that for redemption. We needed that for strength. We needed that to still feel we could go on and live the life we were living. Because this is way back when our people were still in chains and in bondage and hurt. And somehow or another, you could not think about it just for a second. While somebody who had a great voice could sing songs and make you give you hope. Make you feel like this is, you know, that trouble don't last always. Back then, you had to believe trouble wasn't going to last always. Otherwise, you just, you know. Find something sharp, slit your wrist, and just get it over with. But you have to believe if we keep working, we stay together. Even though we keep having these kids somehow or another, but if we keep raising them, teach them to read somewhere, and, and <laughs> teach them to read in quiet so nobody know about it, we could possibly raise them in a different world later on if we live long enough. So that's what spirituals put me in the mindset of, and it, it, it kind of get me. It kind of get me. And it ain't the hardest thing to talk about because I, I really believe if you see the pictures or the oldest of videos and stuff like that, I don't care what color you are. If you see that, you see another person being treated that way by another person. I don't you, you disregard color. You just feel hurt. Like what in the heck was going on in life and the world and understanding of why this person think this person doesn't deserve to, to be happy or this person doesn't deserve to be loved or treated with respect and all all together. So the older spirituals, the older hymnals and stuff like that always put me back like I'm little and these songs worked. These songs worked for my ancestors and my great grand and great great grand for them to be able to live long enough that I'm here. And I always feel like I'm this kid again when I hear songs like that. So it's, it's always touching. And now music has nothing to do with any of that. Because now is the kind of music you want to listen to. Hip-hop, R&B, rap, whatever, whatever. whatever. 
the same basis of music was created at one point to set us free. People in the industry or people who are in those places now can actually use their platform to get people arrested. Arrested. Put back in bondage. Put back in captivity. That's why you don't hear me talk a whole lot about the more recent stuff about the little kid that got out out of jail and ratted on other people. He was perceived to have been a rapper. The, 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 yeah, the Takashi guy. I talked about it before. The Takashi guy. Yeah, he was ratting, put people back in jail. And I was like, damn, look at this. How m- music has evolved from using music and song to get people out of bondage and now people in the industry and the music can put people back in bondage. Look at the 180. At the 180. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't even know what I'm talking about. It depends on how far you go back. You just listen to what's playing now. You ain't got no concerns with what I'm talking about. This don't even make sense to you. Music. Not just spiritual music. This music in general was used as a way and a means to get people free that were in captivity and in bondage. Long, long time. What's the um, follow the drinking gourd? Follow the drinking gourd is a song from 1901 by somebody named Peg Leg Joe. Okay, Peg Leg Joe might sound like a funny name to you. You may even get a chuckle, maybe a laugh. But screw you, because Peg Leg Joe was an underground railroad conductor, and this song was to let people know, hey, look up there and see them stars. The, yeah, the Big Dipper thing, follow the Big Dipper thing and it might get your ass out of here if you keep going north. <laughs> keep following that big ass constellation of stars, that big asterisk, did you keep following that, you'll get away from that. you get away from this. And there's somebody who will help you get out if you follow this drinking gourd, which was the Big Dipper. You ain't thinking about that now, are you? No, now why would you? But why should I not tell you? Because your ignorant ass might learn something. And I ain't got no problem with saying that on Sunday because I believe I love the Lord and he loved me back. You know how I am when I get on a road. You know, wade in the water. Y'all love wade in the water. How many times you done heard it? How many times you done heard it sung? Who you like that sing it the best? I don't know. Nor do I care. Because in 1928, that ain't had nothing to do with, <laughs> you know, how much it make everybody jump up and clap their hands in church. In 1928, get in the freaking water so the dogs don't catch your ass. You're going to get caught. You're going to get caught if you don't listen to the song and appreciate for more than just as catchy and these people can sing. These people can sing. So what? Get in the water. Get in the water so the dogs lose your scent while you're trying to get to freedom. You know? Those songs back then meant that. And music now mean what? You ain't selling no music. You ain't selling? Well, shit, you ain't making no hits. You ain't platinum. I don't care. And it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's an observation more or less, but I mean, you know, take it for what you will. Take it for what you will. <clears throat> if you got any sense of that consciousness, you probably were a Tupac fan or a Nas fan. People that were talking about stuff that you're like, hey, how you know about that? Well, he probably wasn't just on the street slinging dope as like most songs might be about. You know what I mean? You ever seen the song Blasphemy by Tupac? Remember that song? You don't even remember, do you? Remember what Papa? I remember what my Papa told me. Yeah, okay. He made reference that he believed maybe black people didn't realize we was already in hell and heaven was the only thing that could be destined for us. Cause I hardly catching it and how hard things are. We can't understand why we get killed in every in every instance where you know uh, we're unarmed and somebody's armed. We don't get it. Okay, we don't understand how black on black crime is so rampant. We don't get it. Genocide, rampant. We don't get it. Maybe we're already in hell. Maybe because the way we came up suffering. And the longevity of that, how much it destroyed so much mental capacity. Maybe we're just in hell already. And hell, heaven's the only thing that's left for us. So all we got to do is live righteous and live right. We'll be all right. You couldn't contemplate that if you don't think somewhat to what I'm saying. It might be true. You don't get it. You won't get it. It's just going to be odd. You're just going to be left out. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to live life and disregard everything. And there's just no hope. Of course there's hope. Of course there's hope. If you believe in God, you believe you got hope, but you're supposed to live a certain way. And maybe if you realize all this stuff going on around you should not affect you. It should make you have your your own, you know, reasoning, your own thoughts behind it. You should stand strong in those beliefs, but you should always keep God in front and everything else behind you. Don't worry about it. Keep going. You cannot stop. You know what I mean? So it don't discourage me to say what I'm saying. 
I'm the Williams song. I'm not just a nobody. I ain't no damn nobody. You call me a nobody, and you'll see somebody tear somebody ass up in the street. That's what you'll see. I'm not no nobody. But yes, I was raised up on believing. You know, yeah, we ain't got to have fine homes, fancy cars, and all that kind of trash to be. You know, the whole our heads up and still go out and say, yeah, my mom is Lizzie and Desi White. You damn right. Yeah, that's right. And do not try me. You get my timing wrong, I show you what they taught me about when people get in my faith. You would get that. So, no, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have all the things that people might be so proud of, but what I had to be proud of was right here and what's taught to me each and every day. You know, no, no money, fine home, fancy car, but I was raised up on the real deal. And that was God made it all possible. And you do have that. And you have it in wealth and abundance. So you're not poor. And you're not in poverty. You're filled with that richness. And that's all you need. That's all you need. You know, so I don't do this for credit or in hopes that, you know, oh, God, see me out here talking about it. God don't need to see me doing nothing. And who am I? I'm one person. What am I going to do? I'm seeing what I believe. And I don't change that. And I don't alter that for nobody else, you know, in belief of something else or belief of whoever else, you know. Everybody else is just like me, and you should believe the same thing. I don't care what your status is, position is, your title, your job, nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it, you know. So whatever you listen to as far as music and whatever you listen to for entertainment, do that. But music had one hell of a history once upon a time, you know. Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, these people were singing for a different reason, and I hope you haven't forgot about them. If you don't know about them, I wish you would take a look and a gander to see why these people took the time to use their voice to set free a nation of people, to set free a race of people. You know, that song was just not its title. That title had content, you know, and it does involve you, and it does involve us, and it does involve everybody in this world with us. You know, the true essence. Yes, yeah, it's very important. It's very important. So my kids, your kids, our kids, yeah, it's, it should mean something. The kind of music you listen to and what you think about music and what you think about entertainment and entertainers. Some of them still think about and talk about the same thing. They got oodles of money. What are you still talking about? Black people getting you know, taken advantage of. Black people getting uh, treated with racism. Why? Because that's something that I should not stand for if I was... If I got a bank account with eight zeros behind them, or I don't have a bank account at all, my position and my stance on that would never change. And why should it? If somebody's being treated unjustly, I should feel, yeah, well, if he can't say nothing, I will. If he don't say anything, I shall. I'll make my voice known in his on his behalf. That's a chance you take, and then people want to not give you the position to be in front of the, the crowds no more. Well, then I'll go locally. I'll go in the, in the community. I'll go in the neighborhoods and say what I say. But to be shut up and shut out and not say nothing? Mm, how cowardly are you? What kind of gangster are you? What kind of thug are you? What kind of OG are you? You're nothing. You're nobody. And you are okay with us being treated this way. But then get used to it when it happens to you. Because eventually it will get there. You want to show that card or you want to show your bank card. Hey, don't treat me like that. I'm, one, I'm a rich one. I don't give a shit what you are. That's not going to matter to those who oppress people who don't look like them. It's just, it's just because you don't look like them. It's just because you don't fit the criteria. You know, it don't matter who you are, status, and status, job title. It don't matter. That has nothing to do with it. You're, you look like that. You look like him. You look like him. Yeah, well, then you don't fit. You look like him. You don't count. You, hear like, you look like him. You don't matter. All lives. All lives. So... Anyway, if you're up late from the night before, I hope this is bothering the hell out of you. If you're up early, I hope this is empowering you. <laughs> if you're on the same wavelength and we up at the same time, you're probably stuck inside anyway, so hell, you might as well listen to me. If you feel want, if you want to, come on in. I'll add you in. We'll talk about it. I done been on every side of... Sunday mornings, you know, I done been up first thing, cleaning up, getting ready to go to Bible study before going to church and hated the whole thing, or at least thought I did, because I didn't want to get up, lazy, I've been there, I've also been up, ready to go to church, because I know I done, I've been up all week, and no, I hope Lord didn't let me in the church, because I need to be in there, because I've been tanning, you know, I done been there, I done been an adult, I done been an adult, 
And you know, all right, y'all, come on, let's go. We're about to go have church Sunday school Bible study right here in our house at our table together with all Bibles open, reading and learning and listening to one another. I've done that. I have pushed my kids out the front door, tell them to go get in the truck with that man who come pick up the kids for church, and hopefully he don't see all them beer cans and bottles <laughs> around the front door. And if he do, I hope he don't judge me. I've been there too. I've been there. I'm not, it don't shame. I've been there. I'm just saying I've done that. I've done that. Absolutely. You know, it's every spectrum of what it means to try to instill the spirituality in your child. Yeah, I've done that. And I've had it done for me. Done to and done for me. So there is no regret. And now I know more than anything, and we'll say, before I say anything else, my spirituality is super strong, and this is where God lives, and churches, wherever it is, I feel, feel the need to have it. And that's where I'm at, you know. It doesn't condone the fact that, you know, preachers is out here taking people money, preachers want to have an Uber driver take them to church, or if you ain't got enough money to pay for the preacher Cadillac, he don't want you in the church, you got an ATM in the hallway, I don't know about none of that, can't speak to none of that. But it damn sure put a damper on what you want to believe in, you know. The church is for the community. The church is for the people. The church is supposed to close. If you got anything so expensive in the church that you can't leave it open, what kind of church is that? I don't know about that kind of church. I'm not familiar with that kind of church at all. But you're supposed to be able to go to the altar anytime you want and need to. And if that's where you fellowship, then that's open to you. It's supposed to be. That's why it's tax-free. I'm not here to point fingers. I ain't here to try to tell, steal nobody from what it is they believe in. Do what you do. That's you. That's you. But like I said, I'm not doing this to get no credit with God. I don't, I'm not saying what I say whenever you hear me say it. Because it's always the same thing. God first and last. God is the all. To all. To be all. For all. So I'm not trying to get no extra credit or a test. I think I'm going to need to pass at the end of my life when I get old enough. Or now. Or today. Or tomorrow. No. If I ain't done it by now, then... What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Either you feel comfortable with your relationship with God or you don't. I do. I do. So, try me. Try me. Try me. Try me. I'm looking at three screens because I'm talking, I don't care what you see me on. You better know my point and you better know it before I see you so that you don't, you're not surprised when I come out looking like this, you know, and want to say, hey, you know, how you doing in the name of the Lord? And don't feel bad. Don't feel... Hey, man, you know, let's go uh, do some cocaine around the corner. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> you missed that opportunity to do that with me. I don't do nothing like that. <laughs> that ain't me. That ain't me. That ain't me. But I'm grateful. I'm thankful. This is the what? I might have lost track. I was sending some videos on um, Instagram and YouTube. Up till yesterday. So it's probably ain't no more than four or five days in this 20 day lockdown that we're doing as far as the corona having us inside. So we're inside still. We got a couple more hours before we can go outside and maybe have a little walk around and then you're back inside. So we're okay. We're doing all right. Um, and staying prayed up and still following the, cur the criteria they're telling us to until things lighten up, until things change. And until then, we keep giving praise and keep uh, staying, staying inside. So, <clears throat> to y'all who can be out and about, if it's necessary, absolutely go out if they're saying it's okay. And if not, and if you don't have to, I suggest you don't. I'm, I'm telling you, you come back in the house with two less fingers and a tail, I, I, dude. There's no empathy. I probably should, according to the book, but I don't. I'm not sympathizing with you and about you, Kay. Out there, talking about you had to go to the store. If you had to, you did, and I hope it was worth it. But if not, le leave it alone. Leave it alone. So, bless all of you. We're going to pray for you. Y'all pray for us. Stay up, and we'll get at you next time. 100.